Oh no, what did Miko walk into this time? What kind of depraved things were they doing in the student council office this time? Oh no, it's about Ish Ishigami. Yikes. Imagine living with this, this reputation. This takes a lot of heart. <laughs> and they love it. The crowd goes wild. Oh man, they're making an entrance. The strength of raging fire. I'm pumped. The cheer squad is doing its job. So they actually are, are cheerleaders, I guess. I don't know what I was expecting from cheer team, but... Yes, I feel the energy. I feel the power. <laughs> Good for you. And so, Ishigami Yu closed his eyes three. It actually was legit awesome. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well done. Oh, this is going so well. This is going so well, it's terrifying. It's in this critical moment that it's going to hurdle in one of two directions, depending on what happens next. Either this actually is closure, you know, give it a little time, or somebody in this moment, or shortly thereafter, confirms his worst fears, the very fears he's trying to leave behind, at which point muscle memory will take him all the way back down to the bottom. Although even then, there's hope, because once you experience a, a mental state, once you have an idea, there's a habit element to it, there's a, a practice element to ideas that I think is not often talked about, but nevertheless, it starts with once. You know, it starts with having the thought once, allowing for the possibility of other things things once. Then from there you can actually practice it. So it wouldn't be fatal if this went wrong right now, but it would, it would definitely hurt. It is really cool and rings true to me that nothing happened when he was revealed in the cheer squad. Because most people don't care, you know? That information can be hurtful when what you're looking for is attention, but it could also be a great thing to realize that actually people are not focusing the critical lens on you that much, or at least as much as you are focusing on yourself, because probably most people are focused on areas in their own lives that carry that kind of weight for themselves. Which doesn't mean there aren't going to be some lurking individuals that would not want him to move on because they get something out of his misery probably because of their own misery his first step and there it is this the girl would it would it be the actual girl who are you i knew it was too good to be true i knew we, we couldn't get out that easy she didn't even say anything, she just was like, here, remember that I exist? She just asked him a question, or a rhetorical question, of you are enjoying yourself. It was a statement, actually. Oh no! Oh no! It all unraveled so fast with a simple sentence. I get it, though. Yes, there you go, there you go, there you go, pull him back from the brink. I mean, we've all made that mistake. Run, Ichigami. Run with all your heart. Oh, we're just bringing this up in the topic of relay races, are we? Don't be afraid to run free. <laughs> they believe in him. Sports club versus cultural clubs. The show's like, I hope you guys like reading really quickly. Oh my god, how am I ever going to remember this? The one that I can remember is... The student council's pure gold augulet, because who could forget? What is a planisphere? What is a maroon? What is Sokka club for that matter? I have so many questions that this raised for me. Sokka, officially the Republic of Sokka, is a Republic of Russia. Google has cleared up nothing for me. Learned a little bit about Russian regions, though, at least. <laughs> these are a lot of fun. Yeah. There is an intuitive way. More reading! Really fast. Really fast reading. We're all proud of you. <laughs> Down the hallway. The hallway of sadness. He's really, like, he's going through something right now. He's caught in between two worlds, the old and the new. For someone afraid of attention, this is a lot of attention. Yeah, he's learned this. He's internalized this lesson. It's, of course, not true, but I understand how it can feel that way. And I'm guessing this is where we find out it was all set up. I have a feeling, I'm going to guess, there, there's some malice in here somewhere. Honestly, though, I think it would be great if it wasn't, if he actually made a mistake. But judging by that scene where she just showed up to ask him about his enjoyment, I don't know. Oh, he was already an outcast, huh? Ooh, I, ah, yeah, I can tell he'd get a little bit too wrapped up in that. She's like his beacon of light out of the darkness. Sort of a dangerous amount of weight to put on anyone. Yikes. 
Yikes. Yikes. We don't like him. And you watch them kiss, no less. Hard to believe. Oh, no. Oh, no. But it's not only that. That's the way that someone would explain it to themselves for, you know, what they do next. And it wouldn't be totally wrong, but it also wouldn't be the whole story. There's going to be a lot of other stuff mixed up in there. And that's exactly the part that's going to cause trouble, probably. Come to my- what is going on? I'm missing this. I'm missing what's going on here exactly. What is he doing? Wait, 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 what? This is turning into like a, a whole dark plot. What is he selling nudes or something? Judging by the fact that the boyfriend destroyed a storage disc? It's something involving media. He's doing something real shady. I don't think he really thinks of her as a girlfriend at all. <laughs> I was gonna say one punch is all it took, but a lot more than one. Right, this is just about justice. There's no emotion here at all. <laughs> you know what? I bet he feels great actually, and also terrible at the same time. One of the scariest things about moments like this, as a person who's raised by society, to have a certain degree of regard for others and to strive for compassion, and to be an individual who wants to uphold those values, it's sickening to watch yourself be violent. What's even more sickening is realizing the fact that on some level you're enjoying it, because what you're doing is connecting to your your best animal self, you know what I mean? It's not for nothing that we have these emotions, and man, if we're not wired to fight over love, there's something about your physicality that tells you it's right. In these sorts of incidents, it's a meeting of two separate identities almost. It's it's the animal versus the human, both of which are powerful. And it's no surprise then that following these sorts of things is a heightened sense of shame or guilt, largely the result of having just been witness to something that you didn't know was in you. And a clashing of your identity, you know, your conscious identity that you walk around with versus the things you've you've just called upon from your, your unconscious. It's like looking into your reflection and seeing a beast that you wanted to believe wasn't there. It's traumatic and it's hard to reconcile. I understand what a momentous event it is to have this kind of romantically triggered violence. He's still wheeling and dealing, even after taking a savage beating. Again, using Kyoko as leverage. Not that it's his choice or role. <laughs> Get ahead of the, the optics. Oh no! Oh no, he's spinning it. He'd make a great politician. Yes, they're all gonna fall for it. Nope, he just looks desperate. <laughs> Followed the path that that guy laid out for them. Yeah. But that's true. She doesn't know anything. You haven't told her what's going on. Right. A lot can be true at once. He's not totally innocent in this whole thing. Nevertheless, that was the past, and this is now. And he doesn't deserve to be living under that weight forever. Oof, what an apology, though. Sure, got him Yuki and Ishigami got me you. Man, this is quite the episode. That's, I feel like, not quite it. It's not that following his heart and recognizing injustice and doing something about it was wrong. I think that's a great instinct. It's a powerful instinct. Where he went wrong was he had too much tied up in it himself personally. There was too much emotional involvement. So he's so wrapped up in it that he was not able to separate what was his emotion and what was actually just, you know, alerting people to danger, let's say. And that is what propelled him to lose control and have that outburst and gave the guy an opportunity to paint him in such a villainous light. I'm still not exactly clear on what the boyfriend was doing, but whatever it is, it's not hard to conceive of a way he could expose it without endangering himself. You know, once he does wrong, he has put himself in the same line of fire. And then it's just a matter of optics, which is exactly what happened. The apology is rough. He doesn't have a job with his dad. I would just drop out and do that. 
I really want to know exactly what's going on with the girl, though, and the boyfriend's plot. I feel like that would be critical in analyzing his decisions. There's no way to tell the girl privately or, you know what I mean, do something that could solve the problem that doesn't involve him being a martyr. Are they dumping trash in his locker? You need to tell someone, man. You need to tell someone you trust, at least. I'm sort of proud of him for not writing the apology. Hell yeah. He'll forgive me? <laughs> oh no. Oh no, it's so infuriating. Ah, uh, he's not going to though. It's tough because you got to be careful of always thinking that you're right. It's really easy to think that. You want to be able to admit mistakes, but I also feel like it's terrible to apologize for something that you've been manipulated into feeling. There's another reason people expect apologies that I think is something like wanting power, you know, wanting to see other people conform as an expression of subservience, perhaps, or acquiescence. People will manufacture shame and guilt as a weapon for that reason because they think it'll give them leverage. And so I think by apologizing in those situations, you're making terrible people stronger. You're enforcing that kind of game and it doesn't end there. You know, like if people get wind that that works, then it's just a matter of creating witch hunts everywhere you can, creating narratives to make people wrong independent of their actions in order to dominate them and get them to a level where they're not a threat to your world or your ideas or whatever. This, I think, is a really good example where he might apologize for the physical violence. I think that's not out of line because he actually seems to feel bad about that. That's called for. That, that is genuine. But you can tell what the teachers want is way more than that. It's a unilateral expression of, of wrongdoing and giving the boyfriend exactly what he wants, which is it's just sickening to imagine. So I don't know. While I generally am in favor of humility, I don't feel like that's entirely what would be at stake here in terms of an apology. So I'm, I'm really he didn't do it. I mean, you got your issues, but that's not the, that's not the summary. Run, Ishigami. Run with all your heart. Literally put it behind you. All you can do is move forward. <laughs> and Miyuki! It's a long time coming. It's not about the headband though, is it though? It's about that, the push. Speaking of him needing people to confide in, definitely found it. Couldn't have picked a better group too. Miyuki look, looking like the godfather all of a sudden, speaking of which. I need you to be my treasurer. We have a very complicated budget to balance. He actually dug into this on his own time. His own research top secret report. Yeah, ten punches to the face. Might do that. He didn't do it perfectly, but he showed a lot of will, in principle. Right. Right. I think Miyuki has it right. Ooh. Passionate writing intensifies. <laughs> All right, very bold. And a head pat. We got ourselves a head pat. Miyuki head pat. It feels good. I mean, it's gotta have been so isolated, isolating. It all comes out. Yes, he has. <laughs> oh, damn. Wow. <laughs> it means so much, this race, this ability to thrive despite the, the hate. Yeah. I don't have a special connection. He got second. But that's all right. <laughs> Dude, you got second. And you ran the race at all. You know Miko sees everything. <laughs> a little normalcy, positive regard and affection. Mine just loves the club, like the cheer squad. Or the body improvement club. All these great clubs. Speaking of relief. No, he's happy. It's possible. This is just proof that it's possible. I guess sometimes all you need. You just need to know it exists, you know? 
こんなに風景は変わるのか<笑>真のリア充は性格もいいというのは。We can let go of the judgments now, maybe. っていうか石神、本当最低だよね。何うるせえバカって。そうなの。本当のことでも、言っていいことと悪いことがあるよ。おふ。かぐや様、おぎの。失礼ね。そんなひどいことしないわよ。Yeah, that's true. They're pretty powerful enemies. They're in a sort of hyperbolic training center for high school scheming. As soon as they turn that energy on people who are not in that world, they're a deadly force. I like how they all have Ishigami's back, though. You came here for this? You are a dumbass. I don't know. I feel like she deserves to know. That's something that I differ. A lot in these shows, like keeping people protected through ignorance is not, I don't know, doesn't last. There you go, red team for the win. Why did I bother memorizing all, all of the items that they hold? It didn't, it wasn't relevant at all. <laughs> the top secret report in the making. That's adorable. That was definitely one of the best episodes of the show so far. Totally dispensing with the, the humor for just full on 100% heart. Focusing on Ishigami and of course the student council and support. I understand how Ishigami could have that world outlook where you know the world's sort of against him. You take cues from what you experience, and one of the easiest ways to learn to just give up is if you're met with repeated negative or terrible or humiliating results, despite doing things that you feel are right. Being the the recipient of Injustice has a way of making it really easy to be cynical about what to expect and what the world is. And there's a strength of habit that comes from thoughts, which is both a good and a bad thing. If he believes there's no hope for him and that he's, you know, terrible and he doesn't deserve happiness and he's always going to be miserable, and he's repeating this to himself in a way that touches his core on a daily or regular basis, that's Gonna stop feeling like a momentary thing and it's gonna start feeling like the truth. And the only way out of that is to start practicing the reverse. But momentum is a powerful thing. And so starting out on that path is a difficult process because it all feels so new and fragile compared to this ingrained, massive, super highway of sadness you've built for yourself. The ground you've tread a thousand or a million times, which is part of what makes it so beautiful that there are other people who recognize that and are there to support him. You know, just giving him the glimpse that he can receive positive regard and people actually can care about him, even if he doesn't see that as the answer, or, or even if that in itself can't solve his problems, just the knowledge that there's something different, I think, can be the catalyst to trigger a reverse in course. I'm sure everyone has had moments or time periods where things just weren't going right. I'll use breakups as an example, you know, after a really Really bad breakup. It just feels like you'll never be happy again. And you find yourself in a constant state of pain around the clock. And then one day, for one moment, you realize, oh, I've been having fun for the last minute, let's say, with my friends or whatever, or with someone else. Or I just didn't have negative thoughts for a minute. And sure enough, you go right back into misery from there. But that one minute or whatever interval it was is significant because it's the first sign that this is not reality. You know, the world of misery or Currently experiencing is not what the world is in its entirety, it's just the way you're experiencing it right now, which I think in itself is an accelerator towards getting back to normal. What's so exciting about this episode is that you can feel Ishigami right on the precipice of this reverse in course, and it feels long overdue. You know, he's been carrying this weight for a very long time, and everyone can see his goodness and is on his side, except for himself, and of course. You know, that girl who, to her credit, she never learned the truth. She was kind of set up herself. What is it about these shows and, you know, thinking ignorance is a blessing, but really powerful stuff. Miyuki looking like a champion. Also curious about the, the bond that seems to be forming between Ishigami and, you know, Miko. 